Hello. I think we are live. Uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon to learn a little bit about one of the unique parks here. We'll get to that in just a couple minutes. Um, we're going to leave the just kind of lobby open here for about three or four minutes just so that we can let people join. So um, if you're joining live, just kind of hang out as always. And if you're joining after the fact and if you're watching the recording, uh, feel free to skip ahead a little bit. Again, about three minutes, three, four minutes, and uh, that'll get you to the program. Um, great. Okay. So um, while we're waiting, I guess I can uh, tell you first, first, thanks to our sponsor, as always. Um, Yankee Bookstore has been our, our sponsor this year. Um, so a big thanks to them to make it possible for us to, to do this. Um, as well as um, to, to all of our members uh, of the Historical Society. Um, and again, as, as you always say, it's a great way to support local history if you're, if you're enjoying these programs that we do um, and, and you want to support local history. You're not only becoming a member lets you do that, but you also get some benefits, you know, like our, our newsletter and, and some other, other um, perks. And, and you get the, you know, the ability to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I helped make this happen. So. If you're interested in becoming a member or, you know, maybe you want to sponsor next year's history chats, you know, going forward, uh, feel free to go to our website, marathoncountyhistory.org, or come on in and talk to us. Give us a call. Um, yeah. Uh, this this week, we are talking about some of the other parks. We have a, an exhibit that just opened. Um, again, if you're just kind of tuning in for this one uh, randomly, um, hey, we have a new exhibit um, that just opened on the county parks history. So the, the many county parks and the story of, of what we've done in them um, over the last century. Um, and that was prompted by, by that anniversary of the parks uh, department that they were founded in 1920, 21, somewhere in there. Um, so I'm going to, let's see here, did I do this correctly? Nope. There we go. Nope. That's wrong. This one. Great. Um, by the way, uh, coming up, the Parks Department is actually having a big celebration uh, for the, the, the Parks Department uh, for themselves. So the big birthday celebrate, 100 plus one anniversary. Um, that's going to be on August 28th um, at Marathon Park for a few hours. So it'll be a, a good time. Lots of fun activities planned. Um, and we'll, we'll have a booth or some, some sort of presence. We're still kind of working out what that'll be exactly, but it'll be, it'll be um, um, some, some fun stuff. So... Um, just wanted to let you know about that. Okay, I'll save the rest of the upcoming events until uh, after the program, but... Um, yeah. Well, I think at this point, um, it is 12.30, so we are going to get started. Um, and I'm going to introduce uh, Gary, who is going to be talking about Stewart Park. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Well, this... Um... This week, we talk about Stewart Park. As Ben talked, uh, this month is sort of a, a parks uh, month that we're, that we're going through, um, we're, besides the county parks. So these are unusual parks. Last week, of course, we're Mountain State Park. Uh, today, we're coming into the city. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Stewart Park, Performance Park. Uh, notice the sign. Well, we'll explain that sign away as we go through the um, as we go through the program. But uh, Stewart Park, uh, so where is this? You may not be familiar with the, you know, the, the logistics of Stewart Park. This is the map of some of the parks that we have in the city. The city, of course, has always been very honorable with regard to the number of parks that we have in the city scattered throughout the, throughout the, metro, um, throughout the city limits. Um, great, great parks. Uh, Stewart Park uh, is there up on the east side of Wassa uh, and a little bit uh, between Scott Street and uh, and Grant Street up on the east side of Wassa up off of 10th Street. So if you envision coming and walking, beginning with your walk on Stewart Avenue on the west side. You cross the bridge, you cross the high bridge, you come up Scott Street, you come up Scott Street, cross the railroad tracks, you walk up Scott Street, and then eventually you'll see Stewart Park on your left as you approach 10th, 10th Street. So it's up there, um, a great place to see. It's uh, wonderful, it's serene, it's 
uh, uh, lumber, some trees, great forest, but uh, best of all, it contains a little amphitheater, which you see on your left, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we go. Uh, but it's a cool spot. It's a wonderful spot to enjoy your day. Um, through the years, it was, our, it was a performance area, but today it can also be used as just a, a serene place uh, to come and, and spend some time. Originally, it was uh, built as a perform. This is the performance spot. Uh, we're looking west uh, from uh, a little section um, of the park looking towards the performance space itself. So let's talk a little bit about Mr. and Mrs. Stewart. So this is Alexander Stewart, a lumber baron in this city for many years. Um, he was born in Canada, became to eventually coming to the United States, uh, eventually, eventually soon coming to Wausau, where in 1873 he with his brother began operation of a sawmill. So he was working in, in Wausau many years pre-1873 uh, in the lumber trade. Um, some say he was a pilot bringing lumber down to St. Louis. He was involved with the, the lumber trade a great deal. And with and by 1873, he was certainly establishing his, his um, business very well became very profitable and uh, lumber, lumber baron, beginning his lumber baron years. Uh, in 1881, established the Alexander Stewart Company with eventual holdings throughout the United States. The, the lumber barons that were in Wausau at this time, um, Walter Alexander, for instance, had holdings in the South, in the great Northwest, um, I'll talk a little bit about the Wasser Group a little bit later, but this was the beginning of the Wasser Group with, specifically with Alexander Stewart and uh, Walter Alexander at this time. In 1874, he was elected to Congress, and he was elected to Congress again in 1896 and 1898. In, in 1900, he decided not to run again he continued to live uh, in Washington, D.C., but still active with, still very active when he was in Congress, still very active in the business life of this community. He became very active with the, the promotion and development of the paper mills in Wausau in the early 1900s. Uh, so he continued to be a very influential person in the city. He died May 24, 1912, uh, he, and he is buried in Washington, D.C. This is uh, his lumber mill uh, along the Wisconsin River, of course, in uh, the, one of the great lumber barons in the city, the lar one of the larger sawmills in the city. Of course, we had a lot of them, uh, but the Alexander Stewart Mill was one of the larger mills in the city. And then his wife, Margaret, uh, born also in Canada, uh, married Alexander Stewart in 1858, three children, Margaret, Mary, Helen, and she died in Washington, D.C. in 1931. And this was their house up on 10th, on 10th Street, basically across the street, what, what, what we now know as Stewart Park, a very uh, elaborate, extensive Queen Anne house. Uh, it was torn down and is no longer there. The only remnant of that of the estate is the carriage house that is, that is still on that lot today. So then after um, Alexander Stewart passed in, in, the, uh, in around 19, I uh, just slipped my mind. Um, let me go back, 1912. Um, Margaret was in Washington, D.C. And in the early 1920s, uh, especially in 19, uh, she decided to give the uh, pine covered lots on beautiful East Hill uh, to the city of Wassa. And, and at this point in time, we really have to explain what else was going on in the 1920s in Wassa. Coming after World War I, 
we took a deep breath in this city and we re and culture changed a lot. Um, we really started to see different businesses starting to grow and the cultural life starting to happen. Uh, we had other parks being donated in the city at, during the 1920s, Yawkey Park. Um, the Ben and Judd Alexander would, would, would work with the city with regard to the airport. Uh, and Marathon Park, of course, the big, the big park in the city, uh, extensive renovations by um, the lumber barons at that time, large, large development of, of city parks in the 1920s. Um, in addition to that, the Grand Theater, of course, in 1927. So it was really at this time that the Wassa Group, the City Fathers, um, Cyrus Yawkey, uh, Walter, Walter Alexander, were starting to really start to take some of the monies that they've been accumulated through their wise business adventures and starting to donate parks into uh, into the city of Wausau. And one of those, of course, was Margaret Stewart's donating of Stewart Park uh, into the city. And it's, and it's uh, uh, what I'm going to be doing here is just showing you some scenes for, uh, from uh, Stewart Park in addition to a little bit of history. Um, it sits up there on East Hill um, since uh, the 1920s, but it, is, uh, it continues to serve this community very well. So I show this picture because, I, and I do not have a picture of the fountain. I think that this is where there was supposed to be, in the early days, there was a fountain uh, in this flower bed. But the park department through the years, of course, has always taken very well care of this. Uh, the stonework uh, has just been really re recently redone. So it is in very fine shape um, as you go up on 10th Street and take a look around on Stewart Avenue. Just some other scenes, uh, what this park looks like. Um, I think it's kind of important that you get a sense of the not only the, the picturesqueness of this, but also the ex extensive, expansive nature of this park. Uh, it is quite wonderful, as well as the, the amphitheater uh, here um, on the west side of the park. And, but it, it is terraced, so it was meant to be sort of an amphitheater. It, meant, it was meant to be a performance place where people could come and sit and be a part of the performance that they were viewing uh, on the west side of the park. You can see the, the benches built into the side of the park. The hill itself, I guess, presents it, it is an ideal place that it does present the ideal landscape for a terraced amphitheater, uh, a mini amphitheater, so to speak, for the for the city. Also, a little bit of a platform tucked away in the northwest corner of the park, a little bit of retreat center to come and uh, relax, if you wish, also a big part of the park. But then what, so then what, what was going on at the park? So in the early days, uh, when it first was starting, it was used, it was a very, very well used uh, park for the, for the community. Uh, at that time, Central School, there wasn't really that many large areas for people to come and have a a program of some sorts. And during the summer, and even now during the winter, February of 1929, the, the the coronation tonight of the Queen was going to be at the Stewart Open Air Theater. So in the middle of winter, uh, they were celebrating the winter frolics up at Stewart Park. And again, again using using this little park uh, for this very very uh, influential uh, event, as well as the uh, continuing of the dance. The dance was a very important part of the early history and continues to be into this day. Um, Alma Blen of the YWCA, uh, Alma, a noted uh, teacher of dance, was uh, very instrumental in bringing dance performances up to Stewart Park. Um, 
and you throughout throughout the the history of the Stewart Park, you see quite evidences of this. Uh, this is a picture of the YWCA's what they what they call women Stewart. I'm sorry, Stewart women. They, these were the dance the dance uh, people, the dance women that came up and put on performances up at Stewart Park. Uh, continuing through the 20s and into the 30s, uh, a big part of the use of this park. But then the community would also use it for other events. Uh, John Wood, major aviator in the city, uh, a true hero to many people in the city. His funeral, for instance, was up at, at Stewart Park. Um, Again, a place where they could bring in many people uh, to take part. He was well loved within this community and a place, Stewart Park, that would be very well suited to uh, a large audience that came for John Wood's funeral. But then the community used it in other ways, just a, a recreational center, a playgrounds. Of course, people would come up, uh, schools were in the neighborhood. Uh, for for elementary schools coming up for just using it as a variety of ways for as a recreational center. So that um, so that is a little bit of the history, and but I bring you back to the sign rededicated July sixteenth, nineteen ninety one. What's that all about? Well, um, I'll. In 1991, these, the park was starting to be noticed as sort of falling into disrepair. Um, a variety of scenes uh, were showing that it was um, not very well taken care of. A letter to the editor uh, said, you know, let's, hey city, let's start taking care of this beautiful park. Um, they were noticing that it was starting to get into disrepair and there was a movement then uh, to start to fix it up. This was this letter was 1963. Um, so then the movement was starting to, it took a while, almost 20 years, but eventually in 1991, uh, the Stewart Park was rededicated and the um, Again, it took on the flavor of dance. The, uh, the dance uh, schools in the city uh, came up and started to perform up in Stewart Park, and that gave the park, again, new life. Uh, it was uh, fixed up uh, so that, again, the dance, um, the dance studios in the city could use it for their performance art. Again, dancing in the park continuing. This is a photo uh, back in 1991 uh, as they were starting to reopen the park again, uh, a dance uh, at, in, the, in the park. So that's a little bit of the story of uh, Stewart Park. Um, going back to the 1920s, a big part of our community um, so if you get a chance, go up and take a look, spend some time, bring a picnic. Uh, it's a great place to be a part of and uh, take, good, uh, take good care of this park. It, it doesn't get well, uh, well used. It's sometimes very quiet, but I think it's something that the city should treasure. It's a great park up on the east hill of the city. So with that, I turn it back to Ben. Nicely done. Um, as, as Gary said, it uh, definitely one of those parks that lit a lot of the way, but mm. it's, a, it's a real gem of, of the, the system. Um, again, I, I'll invite anybody, if you have any questions or comments, and this is, the, this is your time to put them into the, the, the comment section or the chat um, for, for us to talk about. Um, well, I'm going to give you a little bit of time for that. Um, so just as, as I said, we have some programs coming up. Again, here's the, the, the Parks Anniversary coming up in um, you know, not too long here. Uh, but what's happening next, um, as, as Gary said at the beginning, um, kind of continuing the thought that I abandoned here about our, our monthly theme for the other parks. 
Um, we're going to be talking about another other park, which is Rothschild Park, um, which includes, but is not just the um, the pavilion. Um, there's a, a cool story there. Um, I'm going to kind of step back into this and and, and take the, the theme of um, eight different things that you could do. Um, and, and we'll give you a there's a visual representation, a little little what's coming up. We'll do sort of a family feud style review review uh, reveal um, for you there. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun. Rothschild Park, lots of really interesting stories, maybe not as well known all over the place. Um, so that's that's something to look forward to. Um, also, just wanted to, to to let you know if you haven't seen it already, um, we also have our, our next history speaks coming up, um, the uh, lecture series that we do. Um, Christine Kadansky, a high school teacher uh, of, of history at, at Wasa West, um, is going to be back once again to talk about a local topic, and she's going to be talking about the, the history of dairy farming. You know, how did Wisconsin become America's dairy land? Um, so again, that'll be coming up not this weekend, but next weekend, the 21st on Saturday. Um, so yeah, some, some stuff to look forward to here. Um, Okay, so one, one question came through. Um, so Bonnie asked um, how many parks there are in the city of Wausau proper? Um, I don't know if, if you know offhand, Gary, I, I, it's, it's definitely not an easy question because <laughs> it's a little bit of overlap, but yeah, go ahead. Well, offhand, I don't know the number of parks, but um, there's quite a few. And the point that Ben was making about the overlap, a couple, County parks are within the city limits of the city, but um, we still, I think, considering everything, we have a lot of neighborhood parks. We have some community parks, uh, larger parks, small parks. Um, you know, I think that there isn't a neighborhood um, that isn't covered in some way with a with a was city of Wausau Park. And and offhand, I don't know that number, but we we do have a lot of parks uh, in this city. And they're continuing to build parks. The new uh, playground park um, along the riverfront um, uh, in the new development along the Wisconsin River. Uh, we're continuing to um, upgrade playgrounds in our parks. So I think there's a continual movement on our park department uh, to you know, improve our parks and to make them more fun and relaxing and enjoyable for the citizens of not only the city, but I'm sure of the of the county of Marathon. Yeah, so I just looked at the official list, at least on their website, and there's something like 32 individual parks just in the city of Wausau. Um, and then I think two, three dozen or so in the, in the county. Um, so yeah, a lot, of, a lot of different parks, from, from big to small to neighborhood to, you know, like Marathon Park. You know, bigger, bigger ones that are well known. Um, certainly, very, very gifted or very, very lucky to have such a great parks department, um, both in the city and the county. Um, okay. Well, I think that's the the only question we got, um, which is which is great. Um, thanks to everybody for for watching, and um, yeah. Um, hopefully we'll see you soon next week with, again, Rothschild Park. Uh, we'll be digging into that. But uh, again, thanks for, for watching if you made it this far. And um, have, a, have a wonderful afternoon. We'll see you next time.